going on, everybody? It's your boy, Nicey Chunk of Benny. I'm here with my co-host, Greg King. What's good, everybody? And you're listening to the Ball Fake Podcast. It's now episode 39. If you're new to our YouTube channel or listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, make sure to give us a nice review, comment, hashtag, let's go viral, like and subscribe, and give us a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. But, you know, today we're going to talk about the NBA regular season awards, going to deep dive into, you know, the MVP, Coach of the Year, you know, war- awards like that. But before we hop into all of that, I want to give a quick shout out to our subscriber today, which is Jaden Green. Appreciate you liking and subscribing and showing so much love and support to our YouTube channel and our podcast overall. We greatly appreciate it. Now, the first award I want to hop into is the six man of the year award. And I know there's a there's a few players that you know are in my opinion are very underrated when it comes to you know this award. There's guys like you know Jalen Brunson, uh possibly Joe Ingles and guys like that. But Greg, who is your six man of the year? I just had one on my list and it's Jordan Clarkson. It has to be ever since the uh with Donovan Mitchell and without him, he's been playing out of his mind, averaging 18 points, four rebounds, two and a half assists, 42% from the field goal, 34% from the three point line. And the one stat that stands out to me is that he's 90% from the free throw line, which is huge for this team because the Jazz rely heavily on their three point shooting. So having a guy who can get to the, who can create contact and drive to the basket and get to the foul line and hit him at an efficient rate is very impressive to me. And that helps the Jazz a lot, especially going to the postseason, which sometimes you're going to have three point shooting low, uh, low some nights in the series, maybe one or two times. So having a guy who can come off the bench, be a spark plug, get to his spots, and can really just put the ball in the basket is great. And I think that Jordan Clarkson, just off his stats alone and its impact on this team is very, is the reason why I have him winning this award. But nicely, what about you? Uh, I mean, I got Jordan Clarkson as well. I mean, this is a guy that we know very well, you know, from his uh, LA Laker days and everything. He really comes in and he steers the second unit for this Utah Jazz ball club. You know, he's 55% true shooting. His plus minus per 100 possessions is plus 7.9 on court. And then when he's off the court, it's negative 3.5. So that really tells you that this guy, he comes in, he has a really, a real legitimate impact for this ball club and everything. And I think he's going to be one of their biggest X factors heading into the postseason. Given the fact that, you know, he's a very big spark off the bench. You know, he's capable of, you know, getting a bucket at any given time. He's a matchup nightmare, big contributor, can heat up in a hurry, scores in bunches. He's also a floor spacer, three level score. And I mean, you know, this is a guy that brings a lot to the table when it comes to, you know, scoring the basketball. And, you know, with all that being said, he's got to be our sixth man of the year. So, yeah, that Jordan Clarkson, he's definitely got to be that the award winner for that category. But on to the rookie of the year. Greg, who is your rookie of the year? You know who I got. <laughs> I got LaMelo, man. People hate. I know he got injured, but just think about the impact that he's bringing. Okay, first of all, 15 points per game, six rebounds, six assists, a steal, steal and a half per game, shooting 44% from the field, 35% from the three-point line. This is a guy who developed throughout the course of the year, even, even through the injury. He developed his playmaking skills off the pick and roll. Um, he struggled sometimes picking up his dribble at the start. At, at the top of the key uh, in half court settings I mean he developed that over the course of the year this is a guy who just got better he won the NBA rookie of the month three times he led his team to the playoffs even though they got beat yesterday against the Pacers and he struggled in that game he still led them uh, to that spot in the playing game I mean his per 36 minute stats are even impressive too almost 20.7 rebounds seven and a half assists and two steals like this guy just is very very good the Only and, and he's very efficient he impacts everybody himself and his teammates he creates creates opportunities for himself creates opportunities for his teammates he pushes the pace and transition he's he hustles on defense he can hustle on offense I mean he's just a very good energy guy and a good guy who who leads by example on the court and gets everybody is involved and gets everybody in the right places and he I think for the Hornets this is a great pickup for them and this is a guy who showed throughout the whole year that he can be an impact on his team and lead them to wins compared to a guy like Anthony Edwards who who has lack of inefficient issues but that's why I picked LaMelo for this award and I think it's I think it's it Anthony Edwards toward the second half of the season definitely cut it close, but I still gonna edge it to Lamelo. But not yeah, so and I, I was think? I was gonna ask you why do you feel like Anthony Edwards isn't the rookie of the year? Yeah, it's I have to say the inefficient issues, and then I mean they have D'Angelo Russell and they have Carl Anthony Towns, two good players, but they weren't resulting those into wins and. Even though he averaged 19 points, there were so many times during reg- he Anthony Edwards got off to the season very bad and very inefficient. So I have to give it to LaMelo on that edge, but that's why I chose that. 
Okay, I, I agree with that 100%. And I think it's funny, too, because they were actually t- thinking about trading this guy a month into the regular season. So <laughs> that, we got to take that into account. But, you know, I, I agree with you again on this award. It's LaMelo Ball for me. I mean, this is a guy, he he's impacted winning from day one. He's really brought, like, a winning culture to the Charlotte Hornets organization overall exactly. s- from day one. Um, I mean, on top of that, you know, he's the youngest player with a triple-double in NBA history, overtaking his older brother Lonzo Ball for the that statistic and you know he's somebody he shoots the ball pretty well especially from three he's shooting 35 percent from three his effective field goal percentage is 50.4 and with all that coming into account this is also somebody who can create for his teammates you've seen the you know touchdown passes to Bismack Biyombo, uh Cody Zeller Miles Bridges and you know the Hornets they're 10 and 11 without LaMelo Ball so this is a team that really looks to this guy to you know come up and help them with wins Last year, if you look at it, their win percentage was 35.4%. This year, it's up to 45.8%. So when you take all that into account, and given the fact that, you know, Tyrese Halliburton, he hasn't been, like, too crazy. He's more so just been consistent. And then, like you said, Anthony Edwards, he's been inefficient all year. I'd have to say LaMelo Ball is definitely my rookie of the year. Totally agree. But moving on is the most improved player of the year. And I got a feeling we're going to agree on this one as well, Greg. Yep, I got Julius Randle. You already know. And of course. He, he's, he's, the, he's a clear favorite, obviously. I mean, just insane. 24 points per game, 10 rebounds, 6 assists, 45% from the field, 41% from the three-point line. This guy who has improved over the years and just helps the Knicks in so many ways. His versatility on defense, his versatility on offense. He's expanded his range. He can knock down a three-point ball. Great mid-range now. Great in the triple threat. Quick first step. I mean, he does it all. He has 7.8 win shares, which is 16th best in the NBA 4.2 defensive win series which is and that's second in the NBA which is good because they're getting stops on defense and I have to tip my hat to Tom Thibodeau on that but um Julius Randle his IQ on defense is definitely getting better he has six triple doubles this year so this is a triple double threat who he can get his teammates open he can create create for others can create for himself so and then his defensive rating 107.2 107.2 that's 10th best so this guy is just very good for the Knicks he's gonna be good in the future and a guy that I would like to see the Knicks build around for the next future for sure and you know with all that being said I also have Julius Randle as my most improved player of the year and it's not even close I mean this is a guy he contributes to all facets of the game I mean we've talked about you know his all-around game in previous episodes. You know, he's a walking mismatch as well. His quick decision-making is an aspect of his game that I really, really do enjoy. And this is somebody who's also added a three-pointer to his uh, arsenal. You know, he's shooting 41.1% on the year. He, This is a guy that leads by example. He's improved defensively, like you stated, uh, defensive rating at 107.2. He's got a plus-minus of 153. And on top of that, 20% of his shots are from the 10 to 16 feet. So he's very efficient from that area as well and you know he's also shooting 43 percent from that spot so with all that being said i think julius Randle is definitely the most improved player of the year and i really don't know who could really compete with him when it comes to you know this award overall but moving on is defensive player of the year and i feel like this is the most controversial yeah. outside yeah, outside of the we're mvp award but yeah who is your defensive player of the year so i'm gonna start i have so the next three awards i'm have honorable mention these are guys that are like a second third or fourth on my list so my honorable mentions for this is rudy gobert bam out of bias rudy gobert as an honorable mention (laughs) oh my goodness and Giannis Antetokounmpo. so my first person is ben simmons and the reason why i say this is because you got to think about ben simmons and the way the league is the league is getting these are these are guys position positionless players. These guys can't this Ben Simmons can guard one through four. And the only knock on him is that he can't guard post defenders. But my thing is you got him beat in that middle. So he can guard the he can guard the post defenders. So I'm thinking about Ben Simmons all year. He was a great man to man defender, great perimeter defender. He averaged a steal, steal and a half per game, 3.3 win shares, which is ninth best in the league. He helped his team be second in defensive rating for the season this is guy who's switchable in all pick and rolls and you think about Gorbert if you switch him on pick and roll he's not guarding anybody on the perimeter right so I have to get the edge to Ben Simmons and um, and the stuff that he brings to the court on the defensive side he's he's gonna get in the passing lane he's gonna guard your best defender every night he's gonna do it every night he's gonna hustle every night and that's why I have to give it to Ben Simmons because the way the league is he's very versatile on the defensive end which the knock on Gobert, Gobert is that he's only 
he's going to rim protect. That's it. So that's why I have to give it to Ben Simmons. But nicely, go ahead and talk, talk your, talk your age, man. <laughs> okay, man. Okay. So my thing is with the honorable mentions. Yeah. Rudy Gobert, who, you know, is literally first in damn near every defensive category. I wouldn't I wouldn't give him an honorable mention, but he's won second place. And when it comes to this award for me, I got to go with Ben Simmons as well. Oh, I mean, yeah, this sorry. is a guy. This is a guy that's got great hands on the defensive yep. side of the ball. You know, he's a great off ball defender. Like you stated, versatile defender can guard practically every single position besides, you know, in the post and everything. But, you know, aside from that, this is a guy he does a really good job of guarding the pick and roll. Even when, you know, he's going under the pick and roll, he still finds way to, you know, bother guys' shots and, you know, stop them from attacking the lanes and, you know, things like that. And, you know, he also does a really good job of, you know, chasing guys off of screens. He forces guys to play further out, which is something that, you know, Gobert really struggles with. And on top of that, he just is very impactful on that side of the ball. He can guard the best player on the opposing team. And with all that being said, Ben Simmons has to be my defensive player of the year. Exactly. But I do disagree that, you know, Rudy Gobert is an honorable <laughs> man. Give the guy second place. No, no, yeah. He's he's definitely second place for sure. For sure. <laughs> but on to our most prestigious award, the most valuable player. Who is your most valuable player this year, Greg? Again, I'm going to go into my honorable mentions first. <laughs> but uh, Steph Curry, Chris Paul, and Embiid, those are all my honorable mentions. And then my main guy that I would pick for this year is Jokic. He's got a great storyline. First of all, his stats tell it all. 26 points uh, per game, 10 10 rebounds, 8 of 6, shooting 56% from the field, 38% from the three-point line. When you look at Jokic, yes, the Nuggets started off slow. But when they lost Murray, who took over? Jokic. I think he's averaging a triple-double without Murray in the lineup. And then look look at all his ratings. Player efficiency rating, he's first in his win shares on the season. He's first. Offensive and win shares, he's first in that. Offensive rating, he's fifth in. He played all 70, 72 games compared to Embiid, a guy that people would say he's second to. He led the Nuggets from fifth to third to finish third in the Western Conference. So Jokic really gathered this team around with his playmaking and his brilliant brilliant offensive mind and his skilled skilled moves on the offensive end to be third in this in a tough western conference so i have to edge it out to Jokic for that for that reason but nicely going to who's your mvp this season man i'm not gonna lie i'm not gonna lie i don't have one i do not have a most valuable player and and everybody knows i've been somebody who's been very high on joel and b this year Mm -hmm. yeah you have but I, I feel like with okay with my top three candidates is Nikola Jokic obviously Joel Embiid and then Stephen Curry. What I saw Stephen Curry accomplish this season is second to none. I mean he's he's essentially done um, put up way better numbers than in his back to back MVP seasons. But when I come when you think about you know the record and you know the impact and everything, we do have to take the fact that they're an A seed away from Stephen Curry. Yeah. Regardless of, you know, the numbers that he's put up, even though they are very historic. And when it comes to Embiid, yes, I know he was injured and everything. But before the injury, he was clearly putting up way better numbers than, you know, Nikola Jokic. But when you think about Nikola Jokic, like he stated, he's put up historic numbers as well. He's averaging either a triple double or nearly a triple double. And his team is top four in the Western Conference. So this one is really a toss up for me. I'm going to basically uh, toss up a coin to see who my MVP <laughs> is. But I, in all honesty, I really don't have one. But if I if I had to choose who I think is going to win, it's got to be Nikola Jokic. OK, but moving on to our final award, coach of the year. Greg, please get this one right. Who is your coach? of the I year? get it right. Uh, I think we're going to disagree on this one, but I'm going to just say my main one. And I'm you are. I think you already know, but I, I'm going to say it anyway. Monte Williams. And the only reason I'm saying that is. Yes, they had a hot bubble start. Ooh. <laughs> they had a hot bubble start. They had an incredible bubble run. But the question was, after that bubble run, could they carry it on to next season? And he did it. He did it. 51 and 21, second in the West, fifth in offensive rating, ninth in defensive rating. He's a player's coach. He developed those young guys like Cam Johnson, Javon Carter, Mikel Bridges, DeAndre Ayton, Devin Booker. I mean, his, his presence on the court and his knowledge of the game you could definitely see it 
through these guys playing it and, and it was incredible the suns i feel like we did not talk about the suns a lot this season i mean yes they added key pieces like a jay of course crowder not. what was to talk about yeah, yeah they added pieces like jay crowder and chris paul and stuff like that who definitely helped but i think monte williams with his knowledge i think having them in a tough tough western conference having them at second was incredible to me and that's why i had to put him over there but i i i i feel like can i gonna, ask you something real quick yeah, why yeah, not yeah. why not quinn snyder because you throw yeah i thought record. about quinn yeah i thought about quinn snyder i thought i thought about quinn snyder yeah he he's done a great he's done one hell of a job i i definitely agree he's got him in first place but i don't i don't know man i just i feel like we gotta give we gotta you know me i gotta give the african-american brother some love for sure, so for sure i gotta give it to monte williams I, I i i do like you know monte williams and i love quinn snyder as well i I feel like Quinn Snyder probably won't win this award just simply because he doesn't have a narrative. Like in, yeah. in all reality, I mean, the, they were a team that got bounced in the first round last year to the Nuggets. They were a six seed. They moved up to you know the top team in the NBA. But my coach of the year is Tom Thibodeau, okay. and I don't see how it's anybody else. I mean, he's really revamped the Knicks, and this is a guy that's done more with less. I mean, he's managed minutes well. This is um, you know an aspect of his coaching career where he's really struggled. You know, he's really run his starters into the ground. Like guys like Derrick Rose, could he probably could have prevented a lot more injuries had, uh, you know, Thibodeau done a better job of, you know, managing his minutes and everything. But, you know, he's also implemented a lot of good rotations. I mean, he's been able to get the most out of his guys in Reggie Bullock, RJ Barrett. Obviously, Julius Randle is an MVP candidate. And, you know, guys like that. And basically, you know, the Knicks, they have a winning culture now and they seem to be fully back in action. But, you know, my biggest thing as to why, you know, Tom Thibodeau is the coach of the year besides, you know, all those things is their win percentage is significant, significantly risen. I mean, last year, they their win percentage was 31.8 percent. This year, it's up to 56.9 percent. And, you know, also last year, they were 29th in field goal percentage and they had the 28th best offensive rating in the NBA. And this year they moved up to, you know, 21st in field goal percentage, despite them being 23rd in offensive rating. But, you know, both of those aspects they've improved. And, you know, they're ranked number one in opponent field goal percentage and three point percentage. They got the third best defensive rating in the NBA, first in points allowed, and they're back in the postseason since 2013. So I have to give the coach of the year to Tom Thibodeau. But let us know what you guys think in the comment section. Make sure you guys, you know, comment your opinions and everything. If you agree with us, let us let us know. But if you disagree, also let us know with that. We'll be engaged with you guys in the comment section and everything. But, you know, besides all that, make sure to like and subscribe if you're watching on YouTube. And if you're listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, make sure to give us a five star rating and a nice review. But besides that. It's your boy, Nicey Chunga Benny. I'm here with my co-host, Greg King, and we out. We out.